Do you need to go to grad school for structural engineering? And if so, how do you pick which one to go to? Hi, I'm Matt. I'm a structural engineer in Southern California, specializing in new building design. So do you need a master's? Do you need to go to grad school if you want to work in structural engineering? It depends. So if you want to work with earthquakes and work in seismic regions, like in the west coast of the US, then yes. Most likely you're going to need your master's degree just because they don't teach you a lot of earthquake engineering and seismic analysis in your undergraduate courses. There are some exceptions. Let's say if for some reason you got an offer to, to work at a firm and you don't have your master's degree, then for me, I would take the, I would take the job because a lot of people just get their masters just to get a job. So if you can already get a job, I think, my opinion, I think that beats going for a master's degree. But there's so many people that already have a master's degree, it's gonna be tough to, to, to do that. So for me, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to work in California. I wanted to work with earthquakes and seismic analysis. Uh, so that's what I pursued during my, my graduate degree and undergraduate degree. Now, if you want to work in the East Coast or in Texas, Yeehaw! then you probably don't need a master's degree, but I'm not an expert on that because I already knew what I wanted to do and where I wanted to work. Well, what if you're already working and you want to go back to get your master's degree? Is that a smart idea? I don't think so. For me, I think experience beats going to school. A lot of people go to school so they can actually get a job and get experience. So if you're already getting experience and if you really want to learn, I'd go the route of taking seminars, maybe even auditing a class, a graduate class that you can go, you know, arrange something with your company to go to if you really want to learn that type of material. Or just go read some books and articles. I know there's a lot of all the important stuff you learn in structural engineering graduate school, there's a lot of articles already written on it by the professors that you're gonna learn from. So, if you really wanna learn, go get their books and read their articles. I went to Cal Poly Pomona for my undergraduate degree in civil engineering, specializing in structures. And I'm gonna be talking about how I decided I wanted to go to grad school and I'll take you through the process of how I chose which grad school I wanted to go to and what grad school I eventually ended up in. Now that you know that you want to go to grad school, which grad school should you go to and how do you pick? My process when I was choosing was I needed to know what field I wanted to get into, what specific field and what I wanted to do. Do you want to work in research? Do you want to be a PhD student someday? Or do you want to work in the industry? And if you want to work in the industry, do you want to work with uh, buildings or bridges because those two things are pretty much almost different industries You can either go into buildings or you can either go into Bridges and where do you want to work? Do you want to work in the East Coast where they don't have too much seismic? Uh, activity or do you want to work in the West Coast where there's a lot of earthquakes and you need to know a lot of seismic analysis For me, I knew I wanted to work in California and work on earthquakes, learn about earthquakes, and design for seismic. For me, I wanted to engineer and design new buildings. That way, I would go into step number two, which is making a list. So how did I do this? Well, the first thing that I did was go talk to my professors. My, my professors were PEs, so they've already had experience in the industry and they knew a lot of industry professionals. So first thing is I'd get their opinion, which ones were good for if I wanted to work in earthquake engineering. They gave me some suggestions. I would also go to professional organization, structural engineering society meetings, and I'd go talk to some of the professionals there because that way I could get their opinion, what the, the industry's opinion on which grad schools were actually good in the industry. Of course, I'd go to online forums, search the internet, do some research. And another thing that I would do now is use LinkedIn. I could, re I would, if I was to go back in time, I would reach out to, industry professionals via LinkedIn in the area that I wanted to work in and get their opinions. So if you're like me and you want to work in the West Coast, you want to work with earthquake engineering, the biggest tip that I can give you is choose a school that has performance-based design and nonlinear analysis. I think those are the most useful things that you're going to learn from grad school and and it's where the industry is gonna go in the future, so it's really good to know that. So after you get all your schools together, you do your research, then I would put them into tiers. So tier one would be those, those uh, 
two or three schools that for sure they're on top of your list and then you'd have your second tier then you'd have your third tier on kind of like your backup schools. The top tier schools for me were UC Berkeley and UC San Diego. The second tiers for me were UC Davis, Lehigh and UIUC. Side note, if you're not an undergrad student at one of these top tier schools and you want to apply to grad school, let's say you're going to a CSU. For example, I went to Cal Poly Pomona for my undergraduate degree. Make sure to apply to all those top tier schools, even if you don't think that you can get in, at least try. I know for me back in undergrad, I just wanted to go to grad school at Cal Poly Pomona. That was a easy route for me to go. I pretty much already got in. And I was thinking to myself, ah, my GPA is not that high. I, I, I probably had like a 3.3 or 3.2 GPA. I probably wasn't even gonna get into the, those top tier structural engineering schools. So I, I pretty much wasn't even gonna try to apply to them. It wasn't until one of my professors, when I was talking to him after class, he pretty much told me, hey, you should be applying and going to the top tier grad schools for structural engineering. And it wasn't until that, that I started to kind of believe in myself. Hey, I can do this. I may not have the highest GPA, but I have other skills that I can rely on. And I got into a lot of schools. I got rejected by a lot of schools, but I went to UC San Diego, one of my top tier schools that I wanted to get, to get into. And if he didn't believe in me, if he didn't tell me that I could do it, then I probably wouldn't have done it. So I'm so grateful for that because going to UC San Diego has opened up so many doors for me in terms of, of, of my career and just getting my foot into the door at some of these companies like DCI, the firm that I'm working for. I probably wouldn't have gotten even an interview if I didn't go to UC San Diego. So if you were anything like me, just go apply, see what happens and believe in yourself. I mean, if I can do it, you can do it. Anyways, after you have your list and you cheered them up and you go send out your applications, then you wait, you wait, you wait, and then you finally get some, those letters of acceptances. So let's say you got accepted into your tier one schools. How do you pick which one to go to? For me, I didn't get into UC Berkeley, so I went to UC San Diego. But if you did get into your top tier schools, how do you pick which one if you're really deciding? First, I would ignore the location and the cost. That's something that you'll make up for once you get into the structural engineering career. So don't let that be a factor for you. Once you get that master's degree and you get that knowledge, no one can take that away from you. And again, I'd go consult my professors again, some of the industry professionals, uh, show them which schools that you got it accepted into and what, what they think about it. And also, some things that you might like about the campus. Do you like the location of the campus? Do you like the professors there? And if they're both top tier schools in your industry, then you really can't go wrong that much. So you'll go to grad school, you'll put your blood, sweat, and beers into grad school, and then your brain's gonna weigh five pounds heavier because of all the knowledge that they stuffed in there. And then you're gonna go on your first job. Then you're gonna find out, even with all that knowledge that you have, you don't know shit. A lot of firms, and I think the structural engineering industry as a whole, kind of relies on the sink or swim model for their new employees. But that's one of the reasons that I started this channel. So I wanna let you know about some of the struggles that I went through, some of the obstacles that I've had to overcome and a lot of the mistakes that I've made that maybe can help you out as you're starting to grow in your structural engineering career. So comment below if you have any structural engineering career related questions that you want me to answer in future videos and make sure to hit that subscribe button below.